have three or four hundred vehicles travelling around the countryside, some in very remote places um, on any one day. Um, and that comes with huge risks, long distances, long hours behind the wheel. We have 1,800 vehicles in the fleet and we have some people that are driving three, 4,000 kilometres in a week. As an agronomist, I spend um, most of my time out in the field um, interacting with clients. My relationship with my clients is um, very important. Sometimes they feel like more like your mates. It's a lot of hours, probably doing 2,000 k's a week. So the day I had my accident, I was heading up to Griffith to have a look around some cotton. I left early in the morning at about six or seven to get up there at a reasonable hour so I could get it a bit done. I wasn't too far away from home. I was just about on the outskirts of town when I got a um, phone call from the ambulance. I can still remember exactly what she said to me. Your son's been involved in an accident and cause, yeah, that. she did say to me, he's okay though, he's out of the vehicle. So I was coming down um, from this direction down this road um, at about 100 k's. Must have seen something out there and I just wasn't quite paying attention. And I remember seeing the channel sort of just didn't look right. I thought it was a bit close and I quickly looked back to the front. And by that time it was all over. I hit the skids and hit the ditch, come over this embankment and my ute landed basically in the water. The car started filling up around me. I sort of started to panic a little bit as the water come up. I climbed out the passenger side door climbed onto the trape. As soon as I got off the ute onto the bank, I couldn't move anymore. Rang triple zero and next call was to my father. Got a phone call saying, Dad, I've just had an accident. <clears throat> and of course you don't know. Got in the ute and flew down there. And I like I said, there's a red shirt lying face down on the bank. And my blood, I was still finding it hard now to talk about it. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it was, yeah, I knew it looked pretty bad from where I was because I couldn't move really. Yeah, and I remember him just being in a fair bit of shock and you know, I felt pretty sorry for him. Um, he was har harvesting rice at the time and basically as soon as the ambulance rocked up, I, I said, right, oh dad, you better get home and start harvesting again. Um, sort of didn't really want him around. Didn't want any of my family to see me how I was. You never want family members to see you in pain. My old man's reaction he tried to hide it from me, but I found that the hardest out of everything. Um, yeah. So as soon as I touched his back, he said, oh, don't touch me back there. And I was sort of hopeful it was just a something out or something, but no, it was a bit more serious than that. This ditch here doesn't look like it, but it's quite deep. Um, the utes come driven straight down into that, basically bowed the ute. Um, the shock's gone up through my back, and that's what broke my vertebrae. I went in the ambulance and we went to Shepparton straight away. We realised that something pretty bad was wrong with his foot as well. They cut his boot off and his foot was fairly mangled. X-rays and that came back and yeah, then they came and said they're going to airlift him to the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. Well, that was probably the worst point for me because I was thinking he was going to be paralysed. Um, I'd broken my L4 and L5 in my back. They decided not to operate on my back and they could fix it with a uh, what's called a bob brace. My foot was in a real bad shape. After a week into the Alfred, they decided to do surgery on my foot and pinned my foot. It was three wires and two screws, I think, in the end. Anyone that's ever been in hospital, um, two weeks is a long time. Got back to home, I was still bedridden. I was pretty dependent on my family. The thing that probably we all of a sudden thought when we got home was, oh, someone has to be here. And everything was, was a hassle really, like um, just going for a shower and going to the toilet. It was really quite hard to be so reliant on my parents and brothers. Growing up on the farm, driving from a young age, sort of considered myself a good driver. And I still do, I still think I'm a good driver, but I sort of, I know I'm not invincible now. It's always worth, whether it's pulling over for a little nap or, you know, having something to eat and drink, yeah, really worth the effort. If it hasn't happened to you, you really will never know how easy it can, can be. One little slip of concentration. There was a, one particular case back in 2011, I think, where one of our staff members was actually killed. Um, they were late going to a meeting um, with a group of elder staff and unfortunately made a decision to overtake a, a truck at the wrong time and, and uh, unfortunately passed away in that accident. 
and that impacted a hell of a lot of people in the business for a long period of time. You know, I've always said, um, you know, there's only one thing worse than, than hurting yourself at home, and that's hurting yourself at work. I'd encourage everyone to take a break, plan your trips so that you're not forced into uh, tight uh, timelines, and also be very mindful and be very aware of other people driving uh, to give them the same advice. You know, you're better off arriving late than not arriving at all.